No, the tie shows the rebound is absolutely too slow. I'm thinking it needs to go to 10 or 11 by feel. And by looking at the tire, that's going to be a compromise setting. 14, I think, can be too fast. The also, the other problem is when rebound slow, the back of the bike sits and it won't turn in quickly or Don't neutrally. Problem no problem turning. Yeah. Okay, how much ride height's in it? Very little. Okay, which is how these things are. All right. I was um, thinking about trying less tomorrow. Uh, we can do that in the first practice. You, okay. you can do that. That's not a problem. If I have debris going, blowing through a turn, I can easily change the line and this stuff. If the bike is very nimble still. Okay, does it finish a corner when you get off the, oh, yeah. on the gas? No problem. It goes exactly right, where you want it to go. Exactly where I want to be. Okay. I'm still rolling on and give it more and more. Part of that may be the rebounds holding the back of the bike still. So lowering the bike would make a little bit of sense. Uh, let's see where you are on compression, and that should finish it for now. Yep, okay. Um, Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, almost eleven. One, two, three, seven. Perfect. So they're both where they should be. It's actually better. That rebound change is allowing the bag to rise at the same rate as it. Okay. okay. Well. So, set it on the warmers the right way. The track's warmer, the ambient temperature's up. We've got a lot of positive things compared to this morning. Right. Um, It's not a GPA, it's an NTEC, right? Yeah. So 18 cold, five, plus five on the warmers is 23, it should be 25 hot. Normally they light no more than 26 hot, so the pressure's okay. where it needs to be. Uh, is your gauge accurate? Have you calibrated it? Uh, no, I'm doing that next. Is it a mechanical gauge or a digital? Mechanical. They change all the time. Really? Right now, this says 20 PSI. So uh, go ahead, put your gauge against that at 20. Okay. And then put it, does Jim have his control port out there? Yeah, I think he said he did. Okay, I'll go down and check mine too, but usually okay. this is within less than half a pound. All right. Well, that all makes sense? Going. Yeah. Um, now if- So on the solo, you want me to play with the brake a little bit? Well, what I want you to notice is, is when you let go of the brake, do you feel it pop? With these, you need the front end taller because right. the mechanical bottom out is so big. And so you want it to come back to allow you to finish a corner. Okay. But you, what you don't want is for it to pop back and induce a sudden geometry change. Okay. So we could always add a, a turn, a turn and a half, a preload in the front. Okay. But what we've got to make sure is that in terms of the rebound, it doesn't come back in your face when you let go of the brakes. Okay. Because then you've got a sudden geometry change not a slow geometry change where you're getting off the brakes, you're slowly picking up the gas, and the chassis balances itself out neutrally. You don't want ping and then oop. Right, so you're looking for the pop after the trail mate. No pop. No pop. Zero. Okay. Just bleed it off, let it go, and it should when you, as, you, as you're bleeding it off, if you're doing both together, it should just rise. So then mid-corner out, you've got all that. The only thing I'm worried about is a sudden geometry change. Because if that happens and it hits on a bump and it's going pop, then you're going to get either that or worse, that. Okay. And so if, if there's nothing there and it's fine, once you get further into the laps, because sprint races here, what, six or eight? Sprints, eight. 
eight. Pay attention to the front end. If at eight laps it's all good, but at 12 laps it starts getting a little different, that's okay. Who cares? We've got sprints and it works in the sprint race. Okay. Endurance racing is all about how does the bike change? And how do I need to adapt because the bike is changing because the shock's getting hot, the forks are getting hot, the oil viscosity is changing because of the heat. Okay. But how does that work for your sprint race? So a sprint race is technically nine laps. Your warm up lap where you're aggressive, braking hard and accelerating hard, straight up and down, but then you know, you've got your eight sprint laps. So if the bike's consistent through 10 laps, you're fine for tomorrow. All we gotta do is figure out the tire wear. Okay. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. No, very. Okay. We got some stuff to work on there. So we'll see you. How many uh, solos are you doing? Just the one? Just the one. The okay. Thousand. So go and have fun. Okay. But pay attention to what the bike's doing. And also pay attention to on gas if there's any wallow at all. Okay. If there is, if you're running up front, don't come in. Okay. Have fun. Stay out. If the bike's... If you, if you want to make a change, because the bike really isn't working as good as it could, stop. Okay. We'll be here, let's make a change and use it. You know, if you're mid-pack and back, and who cares? So I'll let you make that choice. Okay. If you run it up front, have fun. Okay. All right. okay. See what happens. Yeah.